Crossflow fans are back. I just had to study them in the middle of the show floor. So we did a video about the Meshless AIO Mini ITX PC, which is a prototype at the time that used a Crossflow fan, one of these. And it was a very interesting product. Trikes is trying to shove it into an ATX case, which I have not seen any examples of in about 20 to 30 years is the last one I was able to find online. So uh, as a reminder, the way these worked is uh, basically a Crossflow fan is separated by disks. So this one has these disks that cut across. Those create blocks of fan blades. The fan blades run along the whole length of the fan with a very slight angle to them. The point of a crossflow is that air can enter basically uh, tangentially to the axis of the fan, and then it gets spat out towards the camera right now from here. So the air goes in this way and exits effectively perpendicular. There's a little bit of an arc to it, it shallows it out. Uh, and the point of doing this is it's a less directed flow. So for an axial fan, the, the blade slices. An axial fan blade will slice through the air and push it. And there's a bit of a buffeting effect from that. These are able to bypass that effect the downside is there's less targeted flow. The upside is that it's a more laminar flow and it's also a, a sort of a gentler flow across a larger area. So those are the primary reasons you would use a crossflow fan. They're also known as transverse fans. That's what Trike's trying to put it in this case. They have a bunch of other stuff too. So they have an air cooler we're gonna look at. They have an updated liquid cooler. They've changed the L70, which bombed in our review previously. So they're trying to improve that and fix it. We'll talk about some of the changes today. We'll look at them in more depth once we get back to the studio. Uh, and there's a water block that was signed by Jensen Juan himself. So I'll be sure not to touch it because I'll instantly lower the value. But we're gonna start here. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Antec Flux series of cases. We previously benchmarked and independently reviewed the Flux Pro case and found it to be one of the best cases we tested last year. The Flux Pro features the modern trend of wood accents while also focusing on a high airflow design. We found its performance to be among the best in our thermal testing. The case also has a number of ease of installation features to make assembly and kale management easier. Learn more at the link in the description below. This is called the Flova. The Flova is supposed to be somewhere around $140. There's a, a ginormous uh, footnote there, which is that it depends on the tariff situation. They're thinking of including the crossflow fan, which I'll talk more about and how that works, and a 120 millimeter rear fan, which would go back here. So that's currently what they're thinking about. Uh, just to finish going over the case first, they're doing this sort of fabric for the side and the front. It's got a little bit of a fractal vibe to it. This is the front panel of the case. There's definitely, I mean, they're gonna have to really figure out the porosity on this. This cannot breathe too well right now. So I think that's actually probably the biggest downside at the moment, but this is a prototype. So they have some time to change it. Uh, for the rest of the case though, it's very traditional. So I mean, there's ventilated shroud top. The uh, front can support currently 120s or 140s, but with 140s, the crossflow would come out in the current configuration. Side supports fans as typically, top supports fans as typically. So, I mean, it's a case. But the thing I care about is the crossflow setup. So uh, downsides to this, if we come over to this black version of the case here, you can see that, let me pull this. Basically the crossflow fan, the transverse fan is taking up space in this corner. Uh, that reduces the maximum size of the axial fans that go on the front. So they've currently got 120s with the crossflow. Trikes is saying that they think they could fit 200s. They could definitely fit like a, a 160 for sure. Maybe a 180 in the front if they don't have the crossflow. So the, the real question is going to be an AB controlled testing. Is a crossflow plus 120s better or would two 200s or two 180s or something, or just three 140s be better? Uh, and we would have to test. I don't have the answer to that. The way to think through it, I guess, would be noise normalizing. Uh, I, I think there's a possibility that with really good design, if they really put effort into the transverse fan, there's a possibility that they're able to improve the cooling performance across the CPU and the GPU. It's just, it's really gonna depend on how much they tune for acoustics because uh, these fans, they can be noisy, it depends. So there's basically like a drum rotor on the end of this where that cable's coming out. So it's on the very end. That makes some higher frequency noises in some of our testing. And then uh, otherwise, I mean, it, it, it does run at a higher RPM. Currently it's like 2400 or something like that. But the benefit is air goes in the side, and then you've got air in the front for the axles. You're pulling from two different sources. And this is a little bit closer, especially to the front of the GPU. So it should help with GPU performance. It's, it's just gonna depend how they engineer it. And um, yeah, I think they're saying probably this year for a launch. Uh, I 
I think the acoustic testing is where the effort's going to need to be spent to try and basically use some kind of like mass damper or some kind of lining to help contain some of the noise. Um, they're not that loud. It's just they, they are a different type of noise than we're used to. So I'm excited about testing it. I have no idea how it's going to perform thermally versus a like for like with 140s. If it's kind of close, like it's not a big downgrade, then uh, definitely a fan of seeing new things come into the market and experimenting with stuff. And, and trying to change the case design. Now, unfortunately, it's patent pending for some reason. I'm not really quite sure why that deserves one, but uh, that is the case. That's the Flova. Would love to test it as soon as it's ready and do some AB, but otherwise we'll move over to some of the other stuff. We'll go to the air coolers. All right, so then finishing out the Crossflow, we've got a whole video on that with an educational 3D animation that we did previously. If you want to learn about it, it's definitely worth learning about. Link it below. It's a really fun video. That was from the Meshless AIO. Definitely kick this off. So this is the new air cooler. It's not coming out until probably early next year. They're calling it the Taurus, which I'm told uh, means hurricane or wind or something like that. And this is a six by six, so it's six heat pipes, six millimeters. They're sintered copper powder heat pipes, and the uh, and Trix is using just soldering. So the fin stack is soldered to the heat pipes. It's not like a new thing, but we're seeing more of it in the higher end heat sinks. So everybody's chasing these like really microscopic differences now to compete with each other, which is a good thing. Uh, and so soldering's been the one we're seeing pop up a lot more on these hundred ish dollar down to maybe fifty dollar air coolers. One of the differences that Trix was talking about is uh, in their manufacturing process for the heat pipes, I guess normally the fin stack has more of a hole cut out around the heat pipe at the corner to give access, and there's a cover plate here, but underneath it's a, a closed circle. That's supposed to give access to the machining to do soldering. If you're gonna solder it, they've closed that off in manufacturing. I asked if there's A-B testing, there's not yet. So they don't have any comparisons for us for how it's supposed to actually help. Uh, but that was one of the claims for performance improvement. So we'll just have to look at it when it's done. The fans are PBT and they are fiberglass reinforced so, or glass fiber reinforced. So rather than going LCP, which is way more expensive, uh, they're going with the PBT solution and uh, that just helps with keeping costs down. The downside is the blade can't be as close to the, the tip to frame distance, can't be as closed down as you can with LCP, but then the cost is not insane either. Um, this is just the top plate, so you can see it here where this is uh, obviously a screen and I think they said they're adjusting it to be up to 400 nits, brightness for mass production, uh, and it's a 720p screen, 5 inches, and then basically they're using a pin to pad there, so it's a pogo pin solution to socket on top of the, the frame. Fan pulls out, as you'd expect, can't do it one-handed, but the fan speeds are a little different, so they've got inner fan at 1850 RPM, outer fan supposed to be about 50 RPM lower. Um, this wasn't given to me as the answer by Trikes, but my understanding of why you would do that would be for beat frequency control, so you can reduce some of that phenomenon that creates the annoying like humming noise that you can get from fans. That's typically why it would be done. Other than that, uh, there's an offset mount. It's actually pretty cool. So down in the middle of the fin stack where it mounts to the cold plate to, or to the uh, IHS, there's an offset for Intel or for AM5. The way they're doing it is it's just like a toggle, so it, it twists and then that moves it down uh, by a couple millimeters. I think it was seven millimeters shifted down, which would put the heat pipes more centrally over the chiplets where AMD's got uh, its two chiplets on the bottom and then the IO die on the top, basically. So that's why um, that's why you would offset it. It does work, so in our, our thermal testing for liquid coolers, it tends to help. Air coolers, I, we'd have to test it. This one won't spend a ton of time on, so they've got a kind of an updated platform panorama, except they're calling this one the stage. Cooler Master also had a stage case. That seems to be a theme this year. So the stage cooler is $200, 360 millimeter for that one with the ARGB fans. And uh, I guess this is for, this, this is for all of the figuring collectors. So I guess you're, you're buying the Yeston video cards, you're buying the Cooler Master stage case, you're buying the Trike stage cooler, and then you're putting all of your wifos in your computer or your husbandus. So let's go over to the case uh, that's been changed. This is the Luca L70, this is an older one. That's the newer one. Externally, they look pretty much the same. We're gonna cover this in more detail, like I said, in the studio. The quick version is, uh, the case, when we tested it, it had a number of issues where some of them were related to strength and structure that could be from shipping, and a lot of them were from build quality, and some of them were from usability. So there's been a few changes for all of those things. On the usability side, basically, uh, so on the back of the case, the usability change 
is uh, to where the SSD mounts. They've added an extra hole that's supposed to help with the uh, three and a half inch drive support. So there's a, an issue with that previously. They've moved the two and a half inch holes up and that's supposed to make it so that you can actually access the SATA connectors. So previously one of our complaints was you can't really get into the SATA connector once the drive is installed. Uh, and so that's, I, I haven't tested it yet. I don't have a two and a half inch drive with me, but that's supposed to fix that issue. The button they've revamped, so we had complaints about the button being difficult and kind of mushy or gross to push previously. It, it does feel better. I mean, this, they've improved that part. Uh, this was not final yet at the time, so the 2200s for the mesh version of the case hasn't shipped yet, but the change they've made from when we saw it at Computex last year is going for pogo pins to get the cable off of the front panel. So that is good. I mean, that, that's what I want to see for that one. Uh, Trike says they've stiffened up the support on this corner where when this glass is out and the front panel's out, they say they've strengthened that. Again, we'll have to test that. And then on the inside of the panel, so we'll go to footage for this, but it's basically these guide pins on the inside of the glass, kind of like a, a pilot uh, shaft or something. That's supposed to help secure it, mount it to the frame. They've added a screw to the, set, the glass panel uh, to secure it better, which is also good. That's something we want to see. Um, and then uh, there's a number of other small changes but I think that's that's most fun. Then we'll we'll cover all the really minute detail stuff once we're back in the studio and I have some time to really look at it. I do have one of the new ones at home with the glass front. I think so. We'll be looking at that. The water block is also new, so this uh, doesn't normally come with Jensen Juan's signature, but they got one. I've I shouldn't have touched it. I've just damaged the value. I am so sorry. Uh, so the block here. Is, is the same block, uh, it's just powered on. So there, it's the panorama screen from the liquid cooler, the closed loop liquid cooler, the AIO. They've applied it to a water block. Uh, and then there's a VRM fan inside. It's got some access to air. I'm, I just ruined it again. Got access to air here, spits the air out to the VRM uh, and, and functions you know, as you would expect a, uh, a VRM fan to do in a pump block. And then it's open loop. So this is not an AIO solution. You'd hook it up to a loop as typically. Um, there's software as well. So uh, they've got presets in here for different colors and things. We have some footage of it, but you can also fine tune the per LED control. So we've got some shots of changing the LED control, but otherwise um, software we don't really spend a whole lot of time on. The Panorama WB is $240 for the block that we just looked at. Now, this is the, the last thing we look at. This is the Arc Vision. So this is a new case from them. Basically, screen in the corner, same style. So they go on panorama for everything to style with the cooler. And uh, I was told that the reason they sunk it in like this is basically to protect it from unintentional scratches from users and in shipping. But they've sunk in the screen in. They are planning to use this tooling for other cases in the future as well. There's going to be options where it can either be the screen for the more expensive model. I think they're targeting $240 for that. Or the non-LED model, which would be something like this or something like this for $120 for that pricing. Uh, and they're supposed to have four 120 fans included. So my understanding is gonna be three side, one rear. Also, interestingly, they've scooped the shroud. So the power supply shroud basically sweeps up and in. I asked if they've done A-B testing. They haven't done it yet. We don't have any numbers to share. Uh, but the reason this is like somewhat important is because also there's a hole in the tooling behind here. It's kind of difficult to see. But basically, behind this mesh panel, there is a hole in the case. And so if they had left it open, where the fan could blow into the power supply shroud, it would basically just exit, like immediately. So the, the scoop has other purposes as well, which is to stop the air from just getting out of that hole and out the side mesh ventilation. So it, it should help boost the air up, but it's at kind of a weird angle coming in from the side. So we'll see that in testing. Uh, there's a light bar included. Three of the fans are reverse blade. It's got four millimeter thick glass. And uh, then there was one other interesting thing, which I don't have this example to show, but they were talking about how the plan is to make the screens interact with each other. So the example that was given was this screen can talk to that screen sort of through software. Uh, and the example was like if Mario jumps down the pipe on that screen, you, you have him pop up here or pop out the bottom there or something like that. And uh, it'd be kind of neat. I'm guessing that for legal reasons, that is not being shown. Although that didn't stop thermal take or Corsair. So you can always get, you can always push Nintendo's buttons. All right, that's it for this one. I think we've covered everything. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more. There's a ton of other stuff on the channel and we will see you all next time.